The first team, or the F1 Arst team if you're as cool as the title sequence thinks it is, is a sitcom from 2020 that I doubt many people have ever watched, and that's for good reason, seeing as, well, it's bad surprisingly bad in fact. But the fact that it is so bad, and also so unknown, is actually somewhat noteworthy, considering this was supposed to be the big return of decorated writing partners Ian Morris and Damon Beasley. This was the first new project that they created and wrote together since their hugely successful The Inbetweeners, which first aired in 2008 and was followed by years of additional series and films. That alone was probably enough to get some people interested in this new show, and that was certainly the angle that the promotion took in the lead up to its release. The pair said that they'd been working on it for over a decade, and they did huge amounts of research in order to gain a proper understanding of the subject matter. But then after watching the one and only series that was commissioned of the show, you just end up wondering, what the hell happened? The first team is a football-centric sitcom that mostly focuses on three young players from a Premier League team. New American signing and generic lead Matty Sullivan, played by former Disney Channel child star Jake Short, the one-dimensional, cocky, girls-and-money-loving young footballer stereotype Benji Achebe, played by relative newcomer Shaquille Ali Yabua, and the anxious, awkward, downbeat scouser Jack Turner, played by relative oldcomer Jack McMullen. The story revolves around Matty moving from Sporting Kansas City to football club name, having been bought by the outlandish American owner who mistakenly thought that he was a player for the American national team, and after finding out he isn't, tries to get him out of the club. Matty befriends Jack and Benji, then the being mistakenly bought storyline fizzles out, and the chemistry devoid trio go around getting into other fairly unimaginative situations that aren't very funny, don't really go anywhere, and just feel like a bit of a waste of time. In the meantime, Matty interacts with walking, talking, bland stereotypes, Types, obnoxious bullies who aren't anywhere near as funny as the writers think they are, super hip young people who love making social media and gaming references to show how down with the youths this show is, and a whole bunch of characters who are trying their damn hardest not to say the name of the show's fictional football club. And I want to touch on that last one quickly, because while this show focuses on a Premier League football team, they obviously couldn't use the real name and likeness of an actual Premier League football team, and their solution to this problem wasn't to simply set the show in a fictional football league instead alleviating any possible issues, but rather awkwardly never name the team, and then distractingly beat you over the head with the fact that they couldn't show you an actual football team in a way that leaks into a huge number of scenes. Characters are forced to speak incredibly strangely, always referring to this club, the team, and other vague generic terms which sound so unnatural within the context of a lot of these conversations. It's a comedy about players at a football club, but nobody can talk about the football club. Great. Same with the camera work too. It always feels like there's heavy restrictions on what can and can't be shown or focused on, in an attempt to try and not give away what real football-related locations these scenes were actually shot at, or to avoid bringing attention to things like the club's name, badge, stadium, training ground, fans, merchandise, and really just anything football-related that would make the club, and thus the show, seem inauthentic. It feels so unusual. But in jumping through all these hoops to try and make the fictional club the show is based around feel realistic, they actually end up doing the complete opposite and make it completely unbelievable that this is a genuine Premier League team because of how odd everything surrounding it ends up looking and sounding, which then, in turn, makes all these efforts seem like a bit of a waste of time in the F1 arsed place. Oh my god, is that Jack Turner who was playing for the team at the stadium last week? That's what the football-related dialogue actually sounds like. It sucks. The three main characters just don't work overly well together, and for writers who've shown that they can put out scripts full of fun, snappy, authentic feeling interactions filled with plenty of jokes, there is a distinct absence of any of that in this show. Jack calls Matty a born again virgin in a throwaway line halfway through the first episode, and this was deemed so hilarious that it is then repeated multiple times in every single episode of the show afterwards, despite not even being a particularly good joke in the first place. Born again virgin? That was the line you wanted to be a thing? Seriously? And I do mean multiple times an episode, every episode, for the entire show. I never once bought that these people had a genuine or believable friendship, and for the most part they're just simply not strong enough characters to make for an interesting sitcom. Matty is the generic, plain white rice everyman American, Benji never progresses past being anything more than an overplayed stereotype, and Jack is, I suppose, the most interesting of the three because he has pretty bad anxiety throughout the show and gets nervous when put into social situations that he finds overwhelming. That's a fairly interesting idea for a comedy, but it's not very funny, and seeing as his character is also the idiot 
of the three. The lines between anxiety and stupidity are blurred in a rather unfortunate way that definitely undermines whatever the writers may have been trying to say with his character, or about anxiety in general, which is a shame. And I say that because while this is trying to be a comedy, it definitely has a number of messages and key themes that it tries to push throughout, which, you know, is obviously fine. Pretty much every good comedy is about more than just the jokes. There's lots of attempts at commenting on the issues faced by young males, footballers, social media, and young male footballers on social media, but they're always so surface level and uninspired that you don't feel like you're seeing anything that you haven't seen done before and better elsewhere. There are also decently long segments of episodes dedicated to things like the Me Too movement, conspiracy theories, gambling addiction, and a whole host of other culturally relevant topics, ones that you could probably put a decent serious yet comedic angle on if you really wanted to approach them. Satirise these topics in relation to this specific inside the world of football context that the show is uniquely centred around. That could be something new, but it all feels so vapid. Like it's just words being said. Nothing has any gravitas or sense of sincerity behind it, which would be fine if these topics were played in a way that was funny or clever or insightful or thought-provoking, but they're not. The same old tired flat earth and generic conspiracy parodies, the same old tired sleazy guy not understanding sexual consent parodies. The show is just full of lazy, overdone, cheap observations on topics that have already been milked to death. It just makes you think, what's the point? You make a sitcom about football, but nearly every bit in the show like this has very little relation to football at all. Most scenes take place in meeting rooms, canteens, and people's houses anyway, places which absolutely aren't exclusive to football too, making the theming feel pretty redundant a lot of the time. I don't really understand what the goal was here, no pun intended. However, there were a few moments I did find somewhat funny. They didn't come from the three leads though, but rather from a few supporting characters played by Chris Gear, Tam Lacari, and Will Arnett, who is somehow in this program. I think the character of Olivia was probably my favourite from the series because she feels like she's actually doing something. She has jokes, she has some agency about her, and she has a clearly defined personality that allows for somewhat amusing things to happen in her vicinity. I thought she was fun and I thought the actress did a good job at playing her, but I do wish they gave her a little more to do than just kind of being angry and sassy most of the time. On the other end of the spectrum though is Petey by far the worst of the bunch. I hated this character, and he's definitely a big part of why the show falls so flat. He's apparently a legend for whatever this team is called, and has been there for 16 years, having a reputation as a hard man. He constantly threatens and assaults people, half the time genuinely and half the time for banter. He's rude, stupid, loud, aggressive, insubordinate, pointlessly naked half the time, and just generally an obnoxious person to watch. Not at all in a funny way. But you can definitely tell that the show thinks this guy is fucking hilarious hilarious, with him eventually becoming a key figure towards the end. I'm sat there watching him being an unfunny prick to someone for the hundredth time, then they try and show you a softer side to him and I guess make you feel sympathetic towards him somewhat. That's despite him being irredeemably horrible 100% of the time. It just falls so flat. He also records himself getting pegged by the assistant manager's wife in an attempt to become the manager himself or something like that. And then this former player shows up at the insert football club name here training centre for some reason, and P.T. is his friend, but then comes to dislike him because he's like P.T.? Again, something like that. I'd really lost interest by the end, and so many different plot threads had sprung up, seemingly at random, that I wasn't entirely sure what the main story of the show was even about anymore. All I know is that if it involved P.T., it was probably going to be terrible. At first, you think the show's going to be about Matty's relationship with the American owner, and Cesare, the controversial manager, seeing as that's made out to be a pretty big thing right at the start, but that doesn't really happen. Then there's stuff about Benji signing up to play for the wrong country, hiring a social media manager and getting involved with a guy from a shady Malaysian betting gang, Jack dealing with anxiety, his relationship with a female player who likes him for no reason, and his dad, played by Neil Fitzmorris, who's looking for inside information to leak to the press. There's stuff about the assistant manager's relationship with his wife, PT learning to read and trying to become the manager himself, the players dealing with the internet and aggressive fans, plus a whole bunch of episode-specific storylines too. The first team is obviously trying to to do so much and cram as many ideas as possible into the two and a half hour runtime, but it never fully commits to any of them, leaving it feeling incredibly directionless, even right up to the very last scene. As a whole, the show just feels completely hollow, like a football, ha. Huh? And funnily enough, on that, I don't remember a single time in which 
you actually see any of the characters kick a ball, nor do you ever see any football being played outside of the licensed clips from actual matches that are used in the intro sequence. I can't say that this bothers me, and I'm certainly not a particularly big football fan or anything, but it does feel quite strange to have a show that centers around a sport seemingly do everything it can to avoid that sport. Now, a comedy revolving around an American coming to an English Premier League football team may sound familiar to some, because that's also the premise of the American television series Ted Lasso, which no, I have not seen, but I know is a hell of a lot more popular than the first team is. In that case, the American is a manager rather than a player, but there are probably still quite a few similarities here. However, Ted Lasso actually first aired three months after this show did, which I just thought I'd mention because undoubtedly some will accuse this program of copying that one, but no, this was in the works for over 10 years and it's full of its own original terrible ideas. The F1 Asked team is an unimaginative, unrelatable comedy revolving around dull, unfunny characters and whose attempts at comedy struggle to reach above lowbrow at the best of times, while going through a bloated, hodgepodge plot that spends six episodes accomplishing nothing much of note and provides few genuine laughs along the way. I'm really, really surprised that Ian and Damon wrote this, because they've both been a part of so many great comedies in the past, and yet the show seems to miss the mark in such a big way. I'd normally try and say that this sitcom had potential and could have worked out better if it were handled in a different way, and maybe that's true, possibly, at a push, being generous. I don't know. Ian and Damon have shown over the years that they're very capable of making a good comedy, but it's certainly not visible here, and the issues lie much deeper than just not having enough funny jokes. This one's definitely better left back in the changing room.